Hello. Hello. Is this Adriana Hicks? Yes, this is her. Uh, hi, you are on the phone with Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. So listen, what city are you in now? Well, I am currently in Greenville, South Carolina right now. Oh my goodness. So let me mm -hmm. tell you a little bit about um, Miss um, Adriana Hicks. Well, first I want to let you know that the first North American tour and full casting of the Tony Award winning Broadway revival of The Color Purple will come to the Durham Performing Arts Center, the DPAC, April 3rd through the 8th of this year. The Color Purple is adapted from the stage adapted for the stage by Tony and Pulitzer winner Marsha Norman with music and lyrics by Brenda Russell, Allie Wilson, and Stephen Bray. It's based on Alice Walker's 1982 novel and the Warner Brothers Amblin Entertainment motion picture. Um, and it, it, the show follows the journey of Seeley, an African-American woman in the South from the early to the mid 20th century. Cast members from the 2016 Broadway revival are leading the touring company, including Adriana Hicks, who is playing Seeley. So this is your first national tour, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's been such a joy. Really? When did it start? This We started rehearsals back in September um, in New York City, and then we took it to our first stop, which was Schenectady, New York, a, a town that I had never heard of before. Okay. Um, but it was really wonderful. We had our previews there, and then we got really kicking on the road um, opening night in Baltimore at the beginning of October. And we've been going ever since. Oh, my goodness. And so uh, tell me a little bit about your training. Yes, well, I started, I really got interested in musical theater back in high school, and um, I didn't really get into the nitty-gritty of the training of this business until I got to college. Um, I went to the University of Oklahoma, Beitenhofer School of Musical Theater, um, and I got my BFA degree in musical theater from them, and it was really, really great. So I had a four-year program um, training for musical theater. That's where I got my start. And you say in your bio that you said your journey with musical theater has taken you far beyond anything that you could have prayed for. Tell me about mm -hmm. your musical journey, musical theater well, journey. Right. Well, it's funny because it started way back before I even knew about musical theater. Um, being a kid in my room watching the Disney musicals, you know, with their classic films, mm -hmm. I would always um, be in my room setting up my own stage, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Just, like singing and, mm -hmm. and acting and, um, and, and dancing, incorporating all of that. And as I got older um, and seeing my first actual musical production in high school, which was Guys and Dolls, um, I knew this, that this is what I wanted to do. Um, because it incorporated everything that I knew was a part of me, but I didn't know how to like how to consolidate it and put it all filter it all through one specific passion, you know. Cause yes, I, well, yes. I, from going from wanting to play the flute to I want to be a a dancer, I want to be a ballet dancer too. Like I just love to sing. I'm always sung, so mm -hmm, <laughs> I'm okay. to kind of put it all together, and um, and it is definitely turned out to be something that I more than I could have ever prayed for because I just knew I had a passion for it and um, and I just didn't know where it would lead me and that I could actually make money doing this. So <laughs> right, that, right. And that's make a, pretty much been my journey. Doing mm -hmm. what you love and making money. I mean, that's that's everybody's mm -hmm. dream. I mean, that is wonderful. Um, right. So um, in playing Seely, and you know you're coming to North Carolina and mm -hmm. Our own North Carolina girl played that part. Oh, does, wow, yeah. Fantasia. So how yes. does that, does that add any pressure to you? You know, it it totally can. Um, <laughs> because first of all, who could ever feel, and I mean, it's not even just Fantasia, but understanding like the other women who have come before me, like, first of all, Whoopi Goldberg, Correct. like, just, Correct. Correct. <laughs> you know, actually mm -hmm. bringing the story of Alice Walker, Alice Walker's novel to life on screen with Steven Spielberg and, and, you know, Oprah Winfrey, all of these women, and then, um, you get to Broadway, you have LaShawn's, and then last year, last two years ago, we have Cynthia Revo, and now, you know, knowing about Fantasia, definitely, it is, it is really something where it could be a pressure, 
pressure if you think about it like I have to fill their shoes but what I come to realize is that it was never about filling their shoes because if each of those women thought about that for the woman that came before them playing this role (laughs) then they would never revise it they would never um, bring themselves to it and actually keep the story going so I came to the conclusion of like you know what it's not about filling their shoes but actually filling the shoes of Seely who was the who was the only person that really matters in the whole picture and from doing that all of those women before me and myself I'm able to tell the story um, the way it should be told in the sense of like I have something to bring to it Um, I am fully honored and and uh, just so blessed that they even called me to be a part of this to keep the story going because it is so much bigger than myself it's actually it's actually a story that needs to be told for other women out there the other series in the world so it's like hey that's what your goal is um it can be pressure in knowing like oh my gosh these women are such an mm-hmm. inspiration to me and like i could never be or do what they did but that's that's just it it's not about doing that but actually getting to the essence of why i do what i do which is to touch people's lives through musical theater performance two things you just you said that i just kind of took a note on you you use the word revival so this is a revival uh, tell me exactly what that means when you talk in, in musical theater and what we could look forward to as pro- as far as this um, production. So a revival means it's pretty much a reimagining of a particular production that has already been on Broadway, um, that has already that has already been um, created. So, for instance, with The Color Purple, the original Broadway company of The Color Purple was over 10 years ago, and this is when the the musical aspect of The Color Purple actually first came into light. So okay. um, mm-hmm. a musical version has never been done before at this point 10 years ago, never been done before, and you have writers come together, Stephen Bray, Ali Willis, all these people come together, Marsha Norman, look at the book, look at the movie, and they... they design a musical around the aspects of Alice Walker's book, which is the very original thing. So now with our production, you have 10 years later, they have the idea of, hey, we want to bring this this show back to Broadway, but with a whole new reimagining of it, a whole new vision. So you still have the same music, the same score, the same uh, book to the show. However, you have a different director, a different visionary for it. So what you can expect with this show is a whole new reimagination, <laughs> reimagination of the first production. And the first production, like, for example, was very much musical theater. You had sets, lights, like, all the props, wigs, changes, uh, costume changes, makeup changes, all these different things, very musical theater aspect. Whereas our show, because of our director and his vision for the show, we only have one set, nothing but chairs and us on the stage. So it's you, you may know the music from the original production, Production, mm-hmm. um, but when you come and see ours, it is the exact same music and book. However, the story is told differently because it's seen through different eyes through our director, um, and okay. it's very much what like very much not a musical theater expectancy like what you would think. We have no- nothing flying in. We're not like changing makeup. We're not doing all that. It's literally solely solely um, relying on the actors to be able to change the atmosphere. And that's what you can expect. I hope that was a, a, no, a good no, that was, it's that, really that was really but, good. Yeah. No, but that was really mm. good. I, I truly do understand, um, you know, what I can expect coming here. What I wanted to, the other thing that you mentioned when you were talking about playing Seely is that the message that's uh, at Seely, is that message still the same? And what would you say that message is? Um, absolutely. Well, I'll just start with the message. Um, it, I, I have to say it is the same. And I, I believe that that message is um, getting we basically it's really it's really complex in itself mm-hmm. but it's, it's a beautiful thing that it is no matter how um what hand of cards you're being dealt with in your life um no matter how hard life may be there's always a sense of joy and hope at the end of the tunnel you just have to keep going um and i believe that what CV presents in the show is that she's a woman of empowerment um and a very genuine and pure woman um 
that needs help along the way to come to herself. But when she comes to herself, she is able to realize that she's had the power within her the entire time. Mm -hmm. And all it took was love along the way in order to help her to get there. So with that message, basically, it is really an empowerment of people and the human race to know that we all have problems. We all deal with things in life. However, there is no sense of hopelessness because the power within you to get you out of that is there. You just have to get there and believe it, go through the process. Um, yeah, so that, that, <laughs> that, that is <laughs> pretty much it. And also, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that's it. I just think there's always a, um, and also a sense of revival and resurrection power is within each and every single one of us, too, um, that life life is a precious gift and um you've been given everything that you need in order to get through life um abundantly and grace filled with all the things and with love ultimately with love that yeah. it, that that's a wonderful message you are such a beautiful person adriana and you know Celie was not so attractive i mean that that was a part <laughs> of of the cards she was dealt how do how do you get to that place being such a beautiful girl you know um and that's funny because i got a lot of of <laughs> even some reviewers were like but she's not ugly so how does this even help how does it even apply because a lot of people are like but you're actually really beautiful how are you why are you casting this role like why are you playing this 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 role you know but i've come to the conclusion that um you know, when you look at Mister and you look at the people who have called her ugly, um, it is actually, it's funny how people, and also people's preference and people's perspective of things determines what makes someone ugly or whatever, if they're physically ugly or whatnot. So with me, I know that, um, I know I am who I am on stage. It's not about like tuning my horn or anything like that, but it's just like, it's just like, I know that this woman has been called ugly her entire life, and it doesn't, because, like, you know, it could be for various reasons. Like, Mr. Simply doesn't want to be with her, so she's just going to say, you know, maybe that's an incentive to for why he calls her ugly. and Or um, with pause, just like, she's just ugly because she's just here for me to use. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's, there are very different perspectives that can apply to the reason why a lot of people call her ugly in the show. So for me, like, just being the woman that I am and, and, and called to play this role, um, I look at it in the sense of, like, you know, think about that young child as as a kid growing up in school where kids called her ugly just because they were taught that or there are various reasons why, like, hurt people hurt people. So yes. Um, yes. just understanding, like, yeah, you know, and, and even people's opinion towards me, like, maybe just because some people say that I'm beautiful doesn't mean that other people say that I'm beautiful. You know, it it really has a thing to do about the mindset of a person because it's really the confidence that a person exudes that qualifies them for beauty or not. If you really look at it for some people, you know, if people walk in confidence, somebody told me one day, like Biggie Smalls, for example, some people are like, oh, he's not the most attractive guy, but he had all these women and yes, all these, that's these right. you know, mm -hmm. he attracted right. so many people because he believed in himself and he was very confident in what he exuded and he knew what he had. So that is really what draws people. Like you can, and even you can be the most beautiful person in the world, but not exude it because you don't believe that you're beautiful. And that's the whole point of it all. It's like understanding and accept beauty for yourself and, and mm -hmm. believing that you are beautiful regardless of how you look, regardless of all the things that eventually change, you know, yes. <laughs> with time, with yes. age, all of these things change. But the ultimate essence of it is knowing and believing in your heart, hey, I'm beautiful, I don't care what anybody says, and that is what draws people to you. So... Yeah, I, I hope I explained it well. It's yeah, you did, you did, and this is wonderful. Concept, yeah. No, and you know, the thing is that, that you, it truly is empowering. And I got to tell you, mm -hmm. talking with you, you are coming across to me as like one of the most positive people that I've had a chance to interview in a long time. Mm -hmm. and, awesome. and, and, and your energy and all of that is coming through, through the telephone. So I Great. am just looking forward to seeing you. I, you are on the phone with Phyllis is Adriana Hicks, who will be playing Seeley in the revival of the musical The Color Purple, coming to the Durham Performing Arts Center April the 3rd through the 8th. 
Adriana, I look forward to meeting you when you come to Durham. And much, much success with your career as you go forward. Awesome. Thank you so much, Phyllis, for this wonderful time. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.